nearly three years into the channel, and I still haven't done a nunsploitation film. Well, that'll change today with the film responsible for the nunsploitation subgenre. And fitting with this channel's MO, it is one of the most controversial films of all time. <laughs> Welcome to Exploitation Reviews, and me, Rob, and today I'm taking a look at Ken Russell's The Devils from 1971. This film has a rather checkered release history. It has been cut and censored and re-edited and recut and re-censored, and still, to this day, it is not possible to watch the fully uncensored director's cut of the film. Why? Because the film's owners, Warner Brothers, will not allow that version to be released. But, in 2012, they did allow the British Film Institute to release this version. This is the X-rated UK cut of the film, and at 111 minutes, it is the most complete cut of the film available for home media. It's only available in Region 2, and it's only available on DVD because they would not allow the BFI to release an HD version of the film. That being said, however, the BFI did a fantastic job remastering this, and the picture here looks gorgeous, even though it's only DVD quality. This version of the film is still missing two brief and very controversial scenes, but it's as good as it gets, so if you're in Region 2 or you have a region-free DVD player, I highly recommend tracking down a copy. But enough about that, let's take a look at Ken Russell's controversial masterpiece, The Devils. We open with a card telling us this stuff actually happened. The Devils is, in part, adapted from the 1952 nonfiction book The Devils of Loudon by Aldous Huxley. After the card, we hop over to this performance. Uh, that's the King of France, center stage. Rather flamboyant type, that one. A priest watches and seems somewhat bored. When the performance ends, the priest offers to build a new France with the king, a France where church and state are united United against the Protestants. Over in Loudon, the governor has died. The priest there, that's our main character, Grandia, he speaks about how the town was spared the worst of the religious wars because their governor kept the peace between the Protestants and the Catholics. The nuns of a local order try to catch a glimpse of this priest. Apparently, he is the sexiest man in the world. They are berated by the hunchbacked Reverend Mother, played by Vanessa Redgrave. She sends the sisters off and then goes for a peek herself. Bit of a hypocrite, that one. Over with Grandia, he's giving a girl topless Latin lessons. She informs him that she's pregnant, and he tells her the relationship is now over. Not the nicest of guys there. Outside, the plague is ravaging the town. Grandia chases off some snake oil salesmen and comforts a dying woman. The next day at confession, that woman's daughter confesses that she loves Grandia and has had sexy thoughts about him. So he sends her to his house. He is in the market for a new lover, after all. But when he gets there, they just talk and he sends her away. Back with the nun, she has another fantasy about Grandia. This time she sees him as Jesus come down off the cross to make love with her. In front of everyone. The king, under guidance from the priest, has ordered his men to tear down the fortifications of some of the provincial self-governing towns, including Loudon. Grandia manages to stop them, and the king is fine with this, because he had promised the former governor to leave those walls intact. The priest, though, is not happy about this, and wants to find a way to humble Grandia. And despite Grandia's popularity in the town, there are those who are not his fans, and they have various grievances. He impregnated a daughter, he held a secret wedding, and is now married to a woman. Priests aren't supposed to do that. But the most significant charge comes from that nun. She says that Grandia, through some sort of satanic possession, comes into the nunnery and has his way with her and some of the other sisters. He is a servant of Satan, or so she claims. The church's exorcist confirms in a rather disturbing scene that she is telling the truth. The other sisters cause a disturbance. They didn't exactly think what was happening to their leader was proper to put it extremely lightly. And because of their outburst, they are accused of treason, and they are all going to be executed. Unless, of course, they go along with their leader's claims and say that Grandia has also possessed them. They are encouraged to act out this possession in order to sell the story. And they all agree, of course. I mean, what's better, being shot in a mass grave or stripping off all your clothes and having a big crazy orgy in a church? I know which one I would pick. 
And it is in this Nuns Gone Wild scene where one of the two missing scenes should be. What we see here is pretty wild already. What we don't see is much wilder. In the original cut, the nuns pull down a Jesus statue and um, rub themselves on it. And while that's happening, a, one of the other priests, he climbs a ladder, gets an overhead view of the whole thing, and does a little rubbing of his own. And all of this sexual madness is cut together with the scene of Grandia taking Holy Communion while on the road back from his visit with the king. The juxtaposition just makes the whole thing even crazier. I mean, what we have in the movie now, in the X-rated cut, is already wild. Uh, but the scene as it was originally intended is wild. If you're curious, you can find this original cut on archive.org. And meanwhile, while all of this sexual madness is going on in the town, Grandier has become a much better person. He's in love, he got married, his faith has increased. He's not the shallow womanizer he was at the beginning of the film. But regardless, the powers that be start proceedings against him, and those proceedings are brutal. So, will reason prevail? Will Grandia be found innocent of these obviously ridiculous and trumped-up charges? Eh, that's enough out of me as far as plot goes. Let's talk some highlights. Well, this is really a fantastic film, and I could spend a lot of time talking about all the things that make it great. The short version, it's beautifully photographed. Oliver Reed and Vanessa Redgrave turn in fantastic performances. The writing is amazing. The critique of power structures and corruption is right up my alley. And it's got a whole church full of naked nuns. 